What does prednisone do? This is a really important question because if your doctor prescribed prednisone, you want to know what it is doing to your body, what the good things are that it's doing, and potentially what the bad things are. I'm Dr. Magna, prednisone pharmacist, and I've been studying this for seven years, trying to understand it for myself. The main conclusion I've come to is I don't think anyone truly understands what prednisone does, but we have some good guesses. So I want to share those with you today. The most important thing to know about prednisone is that it is a prescription medication that is mimicking our body's naturally occurring hormone called cortisol. Cortisol is mother nature's way of protecting us from terrible disasters. It's our stress hormone to help us deal with the worst kinds of stress. And in America, we often think of stress being, oh, I have a really stressful job, or I'm really stressed with the way my kids are treating me or something like that. But the stress I'm referring to is life-threatening stress. Things like what your great, 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 great grandparents might have faced, a famine, a war, somebody chasing them, you know, really horrible kind of short-term things that aren't necessarily like psychological stress, like a lot of the stress we experience in the modern day, but it was physical stress. And it, cortisol is in every animal. And so it, it helps animals survive those stressful times as well. And what cortisol does, I love the way this author, Robert Sapolsky, describes it in Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers. It's basically this nice thick book about how your body deals with stress. Essentially, it is describing all the different ways that cortisol works. And so some of his descriptions are just too perfect. I might be sharing them today. But what we learn from that, and then this textbook by Peter Heinmarsh and Kathy Geertzma, Condrenal Adrenal Hyperplasia, this is basically a textbook of cortisol and why we need it. So this is a disease where it's not being made properly. So this is what to do instead. So what cortisol does in a simplified way in this book, and essentially what prednisone does, is it reverses what your body normally does. Normally your body, you eat some food, you break down that food, you spread out all those nutrients throughout your body, and you wait for the time when you need to use them. Prednisone is that time. Prednisone, and then he has a great analogy of financial. So all of those nutrients, you can't like eat chicken and then like expect that there's a piece of chicken just attached to your arm muscle. No, your body breaks it down into amino acids and then you spread those amino acids out and your body like incorporates those little tiny, tiny pieces. Those tiny pieces are kind of like cash, like spending money. But most people don't carry around their entire net worth in cash, right? Like you put that money somewhere. If you're really wealthy, you're going to hide it offshore in accounts that can't be tracked or taxed, right? If you're less wealthy, you might put it in a mutual fund. You might put it in a certificate of deposit. All of those things, if you put it in, it's going to cost you something to pull it out, right? There's a fee to pull it out of that savings, that long term if you pull it out of your 401k, right? Like the money, you're going to have to pay a fee. That's the same with your body. Transferring it from your muscles into your bloodstream is going to cost your body energy. You're going to have to build enzymes and all of these things to break down the muscle that you built. And so what prednisone and cortisol do is they turn on genes that will tell your muscles, your liver, your bones, and other places in your body to release your savings account. So it's like going to, you know, all of the funds that you've ever saved up and saying, it's an emergency. Today's the rainy day. Let's go to Vegas and spend it all. <laughs> so your muscles release amino acids. Your liver breaks down glycogen into glucose. Your bones break down collagen into amino acids and your bone into calcium. You're breaking down the fat into triglycerides and glycerol. You're breaking down all of these storage things so you can release the energy and use it now so that you can survive that famine, so that you can run away from the war. It's breaking down all of those things. 
So why in the world would your doctor prescribe a drug that's going to make you break yourself down to use up all your storage? Well, that's not all it does. In that process, essentially your body is prioritizing survival over long-term building projects. It's as if a city is facing a deficit. And instead of working to patch up the holes in the road with the limited funds that city has, instead, it's just going to like pay the few people that it must have on staff. It's not gonna go into long-term maintenance and building. And one of the ways it does that is by turning down your immune system. It's not too concerned about your long-term health, whether you're going to have cancer or whether you're going to have anything else. It's more concerned with, let's just survive. And so that expense of breaking down those nutrients, it's getting that money to pay for that by not doing other things like having your immune system function and by not you know, building back up your bones and your muscles when you're using them. Those are like your streets that aren't being, you know, patched up and paved. In addition, what's really interesting that they figured out about the immune system and steroids like prednisone is that at the very beginning of their release, that, that first few minutes after they're released, the immune system actually goes way high. Like it actually, it really improves and it's just for a moment. And then it tries to go back to normal. And if you were using just the amount of cortisol that your body normally has, which is somewhere in the equivalent of two and a half to seven and a half milligrams of prednisone, this one's a 20 milligram tablet. So this is like 10 times more than that, right? If all you had was your naturally occurring amount, that ability to go up and then back down would be appropriate. You'd be going back to normal. But because you're using 10 times more than normal, you're going up and then you're going way down. You're going way higher and then way lower. You're turning off your immune system because it's going below your baseline amount. It's killing off cells like your eosinophils in your blood. It is turning off signals in your immune system like interleukins that are often inflammatory markers. It's turning off tumor necrosis factor alpha and all of these changes are happening at the same time that you're turning on your fight or flight, let's run away, change your metabolism and break down into the usable cash. So your immune system is changing and your inflammation is changing and you have higher blood sugars and the fat is being released leading to fat redistribution in things like moon face and belly weight gain and shoulder fat pads that we call the buffalo hump. The proteins are being released and even wasted. The body re releases them for the muscle and you often just pee them out. They're being just wasted. You're not even getting any benefit from it. It's terrible because you're overdoing what your body naturally would have done. Your body can't release the equivalent of prednisone 20 milligrams. It can only go up to like seven and a half milligrams. And so you're gonna go way beyond. Your reaction is an overreaction. So why would you want any of that to happen? Well, it's because you have something so bad happening that is inaccurate, incorrect, painful, a problem. For me, my immune system was attacking my platelets, part of my blood cells, and that could lead to me bleeding to death. So taking prednisone to stop that immune response saved my life. For other people who have polymyalgia rheumatica or rheumatoid arthritis or other inflammatory conditions, prednisone is stopping the signals from happening. So you might have like this pain in your shoulders and prednisone is turning off your ability to receive the signal. Essentially it's killing the messenger. It's not that the prednisone is curing the disease. Prednisone cures no diseases. All it does is stop the message from being received. It either stops the signaler or stops the receiver of the signal, right? And it's kind of amazing that it can do this because prednisone through becoming 
cortisol, like your body takes prednisone, you swallow that, you convert it to prednisolone in your liver, and that is signaling to your glucocorticoid receptors to do things. These receptors are all over your body, and they're even at the nucleus of your cell, and it is changing up to two-thirds of your DNA. Two-thirds can be affected by prednisone. It's not like turning you into a robot or something. It's turning on things or turning off things that are already there, okay? So if you normally had this whole sequence turned on, it might say, no, we don't need that on right now. We don't need that signal to be sent right now. Prednisone is mimicking cortisol and turning on DNA and turning off DNA that's already there. It's not changing the actual DNA itself. So for every type of disease that prednisone is prescribed for, what it actually does is a little bit different. What's amazing is prednisone can be prescribed by almost any type of doctor, any specialist doctor. The only kind that never prescribes it is a psychiatrist because there's no mental condition that would be helped by prednisone. They'd probably be worsened by prednisone. So a cardiologist can prescribe it for heart inflammation. An eye doctor can prescribe it for uveitis and other eye inflammation problems. A neurologist can prescribe it for multiple sclerosis, for eye issues from multiple sclerosis, for any other form of neuritis. A rheumatologist, they are the doctors who prescribe prednisone more than any other. They prescribe it for all of those conditions to turn down the inflammation. And so whatever your doctor is prescribing it for, it's generally for some form of inflammation or from some form of immune system malfunction, like an autoimmune disease. We want to turn down the immune system. We want to turn down the inflammation. And so prednisone is kind of like this volume switch. We're just going to turn it down. Prednisone basically is your body's way of dealing with stress by turning down the normal mechanisms that would keep you long-term safe. So the long-term things are being deprioritized. Things like your bone health leading to possible side effects of osteoporosis. Things like your muscles leading to muscle loss, myopathy. Things like your metabolism leading to possible diabetes. All of these side effects make sense once you understand how prednisone works, what prednisone does. So I hope that helps so that you know what prednisone does. And if you would like to know what you can do to help prednisone have the least bad things happen to you and work as well as it possibly can while you're taking it, then you should download my prednisone checklist. I go through the top things that you need to do to support your health while in prednisone to minimize those side effects that we've talked about so that you're giving back what prednisone steals and that you can feel like yourself again and minimize all of the side effects that happen because you're doing something that is really hard on your body, taking prednisone, but it's a miracle. It's potentially saving your life. So just click the link below to download the prednisone checklist now. Signing off as Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist. 